Now I'm going to be hunting in January this year. I have a bow tag and it's because I've messed up a few times. Not terrible, but just, you know, things led to not getting my target buck in Wisconsin. So the bow season in that area goes all the way to January 30, 31st and you can bet I'll be hunting. In fact, uh, next week on the 6th of January, Dylan will be here and we'll be shooting a lot of videos that day and then getting out to the woods to hunt. So we have a lot to do to get done that day, but I can't wait to go sit. Right now they have a holiday doe only hunt. You can hunt with a gun, you know, the bow, whatever you want, but and, and we don't really need to shoot does there. So there's no reason for me to get out to the woods uh, and I have a buck tag. Kind of like if I had a buck tag right now and you can hunt, which I had the buck tag, if, if I had the ability to use it, I'd be out in the woods and I might shoot a doe. But because it's a doe only, I don't feel like hunting. I don't need the meat. I already have lots of venison. And uh, so I think it backfires on the Wisconsin DNR when they do that, just as a side note, because there's a lot of people that don't go out to the woods. Um, they talked about that at doe only hunt in Buffalo County one time, and they figured out by other states that half people participate in hunting then if they're if you don't have that. So you actually have a doe only hunt for a year and people shoot less does half as much or less than they normally would and then people aren't shooting any bucks so the population really explodes the following year it kind of goes backwards so kind of backward thinking right now but you can bet on the second of january i'm going to be out there and i'll hunt the weather the cool thing is when it gets this time of year just some of these january hunting tips that you can hone in on third rut and so you get this north half of the country where ruts are more predictable where you have a big primary rut uh secondary rut and then a small third rut um, pretty cool because this time of year you can have a flurry of activity you have that fawn doe that comes into heat and uh it came into heat already once wasn't bred you know bucks are really fragmented pushed around after the season and uh what was that doe i got two bucks chasing right now looks like they're <laughs> yeah. chasing a fawn around that might have just came in who knows yeah that's pretty cool i had uh that's what i had with uh uh barry and Bo and their bucks it's kind of like you see, a, you see a doe coming by, you see a decent buck behind it, and then you see a smaller buck come through right after it behind it. It's almost like a feeder fish coming around saying, hey, what's up, guys? I want I want in on the action and just kind of hanging around. But I've been seeing that the last couple of days, the 27th of, De uh, of December right now. So anyways, you have that third rut, and then you get down in the southern states. And I was down in Alabama about 15, 17 years ago hunting, and it was amazing the rutting activity we saw the end of January, middle of January, right around there. Just stinky scrapes, bucks running, pushing, cruising. It was really cool. And, uh, and I know that's more localized. It depends on the does you have around because those same does will come in the same time every single year. But, um, you know, for the northern portions with defined ruts, this third rut is a thing. We've seen bucks coming through in January making rubs and scrapes and giving us great opportunity and uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful time of the year to take advantage of. So pockets of does, really look for pockets of does. Deer been pushed around, fragmented, run hard, overpressured. Not to mention food sources and cover sources for what they need in the winter time are dwindling fast to non-existent. So when you find pockets of good food and good cover, you find pockets of deer. When you find pockets of deer, you find lots of does. If the does are there, and they're hitting a food source consistently, that tells the bucks in the neighborhood, hey, this isn't a bad spot to hang out. And it might not be that bucks are even there to, to breed does, they're not even looking for does. They're there because of the food and cover, and if the does are there because of the food and cover, that's why they all end up in the same spot. So a pretty good opportunity by finding those doe pockets, and it's pretty easy. Lots of tracks, lots of bed, lots of pellets. You can see when deer are in an area, and a lot of times the best thing to do is you find that, say on public land you're scouting, you see that concentration of tracks and sign, maybe jumped a couple deer. Deer, the best thing you do is back out, develop a plan where you can go in and hunt, get into that area, figure out why they're there. Don't always just take it they're there. Always ask yourself why they're there. Is it a food source? Is it a bedding area? Is it in between? Really ask yourself, why is this happening? Then you can develop a plan. Not just develop a plan based on the fact they're there and take it for granted of why they're there. It's really important to figure out why. Ask why. Find those pockets. They're few and far between at this time of the year. When you find the deer, you find a great place to hunt. But that means, especially on public land, it might mean just really looking a, a hard, long and far for those pockets of deer because there's going to be a lot of areas on public land there's no deer. Up north, areas are starting to yard, migrate, move, and get out of their fall ranges, especially with this heavy snow and cold. So really, move along don't plan on sitting in your favorite spot on public land if you're hunting in january the season's still open really look for those spots where there's a lot of deer and um, you know you're looking for rutting opportunity food 
pockets, lack of pressure pockets and cover when you put all those together give you some great opportunity and the cool thing about it number three here is bow season late bow season so many childhood memories childhood meaning going back to 15 16 years old we were hunting all the way through the last day of the season in early january in michigan sometimes every other weekend every weekend we're out there hunting when we could after school really cool opportunity lots of snow i can remember hunting on january 1st once when i literally sat down against my favorite white pine in the thumb of michigan in some little corner of 120 acres of field and i had this little five acres to hunt and uh sat down drove early in the morning to get there woke up to two inches of snow on me and a bunch of deer standing in front of me so i uh, just really cool memories going back a long time but it's bow season i love it love bow season it's quiet out no competition and uh, a lot of times you're seeing groups of deer herds of deer not just one or two. Love focusing on warm-ups for the morning. You know what happens at daybreak? It's usually the coldest time of a 24-hour period. The coldest time when it's really, truly cold out, like we've had some minus 15, some zero degrees, 10 degrees. I'm talking actual temperatures, not, not uh, uh, wind chill. But we're looking at really cold temperatures. And when that happens, those deer are conserving energy and typically bedding down at daybreak. They're not moving around. Unlike in November during the rut when it's cold, they're really moving around and rutting and they love that colder weather so what we find is then when it's cold at daybreak it's minus five but it's warming up to 15 degrees you can find a lot of movement mid to late morning because deer start to get up they feel good that chill is worn, worn off and they want to feed and they're hungry so they really need to put some energy back into their system replenish the energy reserves they lost to stay warm especially at daybreak and that way by moving around when the temperature's higher they're conserving less energy while they're taking in energy Hope that makes sense. A lot of times those warm-ups, you know, we're looking at like morning lows are five, below zero, 10, and all of a sudden you have a morning low of 32. Typically there's a lot of deer running around those mornings. Just check your trail cameras and watch that. I'm also, when it flips into the evening, I'm looking for light winds. It seems like when it's dead calm, you just don't see as many deer. It's so quiet. They're already spooked enough anyways. Every little movement they're worried about. But when you have a little bit of light wind, seems to mask some of that stress that's in the woods of being too quiet following a really bad cold front you don't want those winds still whipping they're going to still try to conserve energy they're not moving around much but boy in those big cold snaps and we just had one great time to get out and hunt right after that takes place so i'm going to look for those cold fronts might have some sits where it's two degrees five degrees and i'm going out in the afternoon and sitting we get that light wind probably a northwest wind or maybe it's switching around to southwest so in the evening time, one of the areas I'm really looking at focusing on is some of those bedding staging areas. So I'm getting a lot closer to that bedding area because those deer are really wary when they're getting out into open food sources. They've been spooked more often or typically across a large landscape more often on food sources. So I'm looking at getting back close to those bedding areas and waiting for those bucks to come out of the bedding area that might be just 200 yards away. That means you need to have quiet stands. We use the family tradition steel. It's a lot quieter than those aluminum tingy stands. They're already pre-hung. We can sneak into them really quick. So we're looking at getting into a quiet stand near a bedding area. Those areas where those bucks come out of, they make some rubs and scrapes. I call it a bedding area staging area. And then they move to a distant food source. So we're looking for that in the evening, cold weather. Not necessarily hunting on that food. It's hard to find them out in the open sometimes. Those hidden small little brassica plot, that's awesome. A lot of times it's depleted by now. So those are great opportunities if you have them but really hard to get in and out without spooking deer when they're really herded up at this time of year. You know what's really cool? You think September bachelor groups. Think about those bucks in August, September. They, they were in their bachelor groups and where they're at. What you end up seeing a lot in January is those bucks are starting to exhibit those behaviors of getting back almost into their summer patterns. They're bachelored up. A lot of times you see one, two, three bucks at a time. Those older ones are starting to bachelor up again. That's a good thing and a bad thing, but you're gonna find lots of sign, lots of trails, lots of beds, rub scrapes, look for shaving on top of the snow. But bottom line is think where those bucks were at in August, September, might be a good indication where they're going to be, not all the time, but where they're at in January, because they're starting to go back to that behavior. You know what's interesting? I, I tell this a lot, but I had a person from Minnesota, we were hunting Wisconsin a lot. He came over and he said, you know, we, we hunt about a mile away, mile and a half away. We find the sheds of bucks you guys shoot in the fall. And, bucks that you guys have trail cams for them and, and this is going back to about 10 years so bottom line is they're finding sheds that were cast in february and they're back in their summer ranges they're getting pictures in the summer they're finding their sheds but they're not where the deer are at during the fall 
So try to find those locations. A lot of times it'll hone in on those bucks. And then of course, number seven, just really keep an eye out for tracks and trails and verification those deer are in the area. You can waste a lot of time sitting on your favorite stand thinking something's gonna come by when really that's more of an October, November, even September setup and not necessarily a January, more midwinter, early winter, harsh winter uh, conditions where bucks are really gravitating to limited cover. The best food source in the neighborhood, usually there's not a lot of hunting pressure at that time. So bucks are willing to hit food sources more out in the open. But bottom line is those bucks will travel a great distance for food. Not a lot of cover. You want that high stem count cover, hardwood regeneration, conifers, briars, shrubs, low vegetation that they can feed on. And then also that high stem count for more thermal protection, of course, with conifer mixed in too. And, uh, and those areas are far and few between. Locate those high quality winter cover areas. Make sure you have some type of food source. Clear cuts on public land are a great indication, especially where they meet swamp edge and open hardwoods all combined in one. Look for those locations of diversity. Find those hidden pockets that haven't been pressured. Really consider that third rut might be happening and you can have a great January. I'm hoping so. Like I said, I have a tag that's good for about four weeks during January and I have client trip in there, going to the ATA show. Bottom line is I'll get a lot of days in of hunting. I'm hoping to hit at least seven, eight quality sits during that time, time frame and uh, hoping to see that big nine point, the big eight that I wounded two years ago. He's still around and that's the one I'm after. So hoping to run into him. And uh, bottom line is sitting with a bow this time of year with the snow, I'm gonna have a great hunt either way, and I hope you do in January. It's really winding down, but there's still some great time left, hopefully in your state, and you still have a tag. It's a fun time to hunt. Enjoy January of 2023. Hey, I'm really excited to introduce to you our Hills and Thermals web class. It's something we worked on all year. We're trying to put lots of facets of scouting, aerial imagery, diagrams on the whiteboard to really teach you how the wind moves through hills and how you should find bedding areas, how it relates to deer movements in general, how that relates to this is a bedding area stand, this is a food source afternoon stand. We really tried to put this together and offer you a complete picture of how to navigate hills and find better success consistently where you hunt.